the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. It says, Therefore, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, aha, uh -huh, he's introducing something we often neglect in the faith equation that prayer is also part of the faith equation. Most times we maybe just talk about the speaking part alone, but now Jesus is bringing balance to this that when you pray, so the platform for that speaking is not just empty declaration, it's in the place of prayer. When you pray, that you believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it. Now, Jesus introduced two concepts here that many people may just pass. Receiving and having. They are not the same. You only have what you have received. Jesus is teaching that it is possible to receive a thing and yet not have it. Ye shall receive them and ye shall have them. Two dimensions. Ye shall receive them and ye shall have them. You can never truly have what you have not received. And anything that is worth receiving can be rejected. As many as received him, that means not everyone will receive him. Ye shall receive power. That means you can reject power. Are we together now? Romans chapter 10 and verse 19, popular scripture among believers. The Bible tries again to give us an idea on how faith works. Romans chapter 10, am I right? Please look, look for it for me, I think I've missed out something. So then faith cometh. Romans 10, 17, forgive me. Two verses, please just go up, 10 is it 17 yes thank you thank you very much now look up please it says so then faith comment anything that comes must be alive and anything that comes must sustain the ability to move it personifies faith that faith like a messenger can come are we together now faith cometh faith cometh faith cometh it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God when you read the original Greek context it is hearing and that hearing translating into understanding by the word of God it's not just hearing like repetition alone but hearing there is a hearing that leads to understanding and that comes by the word of God now we see Paul mentoring the church in Rome in addition to all that Jesus taught we see him introducing the word of God now. Are you getting the pieces together now? So we see that in the faith equation, there is speech. In the faith equation, there is prayer. In the faith equation, there is the word of God. In the faith equation, there is the presence of obstacles. In the faith equation, there is believing. In the faith equation, there is receiving. In the faith equation, there is having. Imagine how many of these concepts we omit and just pick one or two and yet expect our results to be Bible faith. All of these pieces must come together by the Spirit of God. Then we must know how to engage them with understanding. Your heart has a role to play. Your mouth has a role to play. The mountain that stands before you has a role to play. The Word of God has a role to play. Prayer has a role to play. You must understand and master how we receive things in the realm of the spirit and you must know how to have these things. Faith, the Bible says, it comes by hearing and even hearing by the word of God. 
what then is faith let's define faith very quickly is God helping us here generally speaking faith refers to absolute confidence in God faith is a measure of our confidence in God but then it does not stop there this is just a general definition confidence in God confidence in the integrity of his person we call that faith but let me give you a definition of faith that I consider to be quite instructive I define faith as the name given to the action you take based on your conviction if you're writing please write this down that faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word is called faith faith goes beyond believing believing is part of the equation of faith but it does not complete faith please understand this I am believing God wonderful but if it stops there it is not Bible faith faith is the name given to the action you take not just based on desire based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word the name given to that action the drive that pushes you the obedient response predicated on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word is Bible faith hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now let's demonstrate something here can I have any gentleman any one of it's not impartation just people always do come come my friend come oh you're already here how do we do it now okay well you come stand so that just stand there everyone watch this just stand facing me <laughs> I don't even know I just need one person I don't know what to do with three of them okay that's that's all right you stand don't feel embarrassed now watch this I'm going to give you a handkerchief hold this hold this lift it up then you lift your book up these are the possibilities that the Bible says we can obtain in Christ are we together now um, if the Bible says this is what should be your inheritance if I ask you come and receive it just say you are coming but don't come ready keep confessing that you are coming come and have this This is what many of us are doing. Keep two years, five years, seven years. Yet it's a reality in Christ, and you are speaking, but your faith equation is not complete. Because it's more than if you did not believe me, you will not even look my direction. So the problem is not your believing. And yet, Mr. Man, while he has been talking for five years, you run and come and pick. This is in two years. Are you seeing now? This gentleman has been believing God for five years. And someone comes from nowhere with childlike faith, knowing what to do. And in one year, obtains that possibility. Time does not change. Time only reveals. Meaning if your life must change, if things must turn around in your life, it will be based on your truly understanding God's system of faith and sustaining the grace to engage it accordingly. Are we together now? So this is a possibility. The Bible says it is yours in Christ. But the dynamics of reception, the dynamics of having it, and making it manifest in your life here and now is where I think many well-intentioned believers are stranded and left in limbo. So we have our Bibles full of promises. We have our Bibles full of realities that the Bible says should be part of our lives as far as our earth work is concerned. And then we even go a step further to read them and understand them. And yet, 
sadly speaking for many people at the end of our lives we are not able to do a very effective inventory of all these things we cannot truly say that much of these spiritual realities have found expression in our lives the average believer sadly may go to his grave with hardly anything at all most of the things that happen to us that we call and we believe came by faith only happened by the law of time and chance because there is a law called the law of time and chance even an even a dead clock is right twice in a day if you remove the battery from a clock it will still be right two times in a day so there are many results that are not by actively engaging faith some of them just happen as a result of the law of time and chance because the bible says it happens to them all my intention in this conference is to stand in partnership with the holy spirit your man of god alongside all the ministers that come to teach here to help bring to our lives the grace to produce intentional results not results you cannot explain no you know sometimes we hide behind confusion and just say god be glorified as though god i don't know anything about this we are not very honest if you are the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully you can know how a result came about how else will you teach people if you do not know ultimately we give glory to god but you can know how the anointing came to your life you can know how favor came to your life you can know how expansion came to your business it is not it is not a wise spiritual adventure to allow the law of time and chance define your realities your life can be very circumspect and can be very intentional you can get up with an intention that my life will be a reflection of the favor of God my life will be a reflection of the anointing of the spirit my church will be a reflection of the good hand of God are we together now and then engage accordingly the principles that make for that result in the end Christ will be glorified but you will have you see the beautiful thing about results is not what you really obtain is the knowledge of how to repeat it again if you lack the ability to replenish that is one of the greatest faculty as far as sustainability is concerned being fruitful can happen by relationships but replenishing happens through knowledge and mastery the ability to replenish is the secret for sustaining anything replenish do it again prosper again build the church again reproduce the result again is God speaking to us every time you do not gain results by mastery you will be afraid of your results because somehow you suspect that if that door closes you will never be able to produce it again so Jesus spent time teaching the disciples they were interested in just having power and he said gentlemen no power is predicated on many things let me teach you he sent them they came back rejoicing and they would almost not listen to the lecture again until they encountered certain casualties they could not deal with and he said sit down we still have a lot to learn but when they were done and the Holy Ghost came on them from city to city same result region to region same result regardless who was the apostle in charge the results were consistent in the name of Jesus I pray that in this conference the realm of ignorance and shadow boxing and trying and hoping may it go far from our lives in the name of Jesus Christ listen to me that after tonight you can get up and give yourself a time and say by August I should be at this level spiritually financially and it's not pride your confidence is based on the predictability of God's systems do you believe what I'm sharing with you the just shall live by this understanding that the outcome of your life is not just dependent on the love of God is dependent on your knowledge both Lazarus and father Abraham eventually made it to heaven but the condition with which they left 
is where the problem is. Herein is my father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. When ye bear much fruit, you prove that I mentored you when you produce results. So shall you be my disciples. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men. He wants men to see it. Don't just keep silent. I'm not talking of some boastful, arrogant manifestation. But let me tell you something. Results have a way of compelling the attention of men to respect God and respect his process. You will hardly advocate anything sustainably until God garnishes upon your life a dimension of result that dumbfounds the wisdom of men. Man as a species is arrogant. It takes result to humble them to be meek enough to listen. It is true. It's a weakness in men. For as long as your life does not command a threshold level of sustainable results, it is going to be difficult to advocate spiritual realities, no matter how true it is. As a man of God, as a business person, as a career person, there is a dimension of God's investment upon your life that he seeks for the world to see. That way, they will pay attention. Come see a man who has told me, not a man who wasted my time. Nobody comes to see a man who wastes their time. Come see a man, one woman. When a madman was healed in Gadara, that one testimony was equivalent to the salvation of 10 cities. Let me tell you this, we do not have all the time for the global harvest. There is a dimension of light and power that must come through the church by the operation of faith that will humble the pride of kings and nobles and nations and bring them to a point where they will acknowledge like Nebuchadnezzar that there is a God in heaven. It was the dexterity of the result of Daniel alongside the three Hebrew boys look how those guys shook the gods in Babylon and brought down kings and their pride the reason why it is difficult for people to see the light and the power and the glory of God upon our lives is that while we advocate very boastfully our results show that we are still at the level of amateurism and infancy conferences like this was designed to step us up into levels of mastery where you can live you can open this door knowing that my life will truly change hallelujah The times that we live in are not times for loyalty over nothing. People will want to taste and see that the Lord is good. The goodness of God can be tasted. The reality of his power can be tasted. One supernatural manifestation of faith, I tell you sincerely, can shake nations and break their pride and cause them to see and to know that Jesus is Lord. You must understand the object behind this desire. It's not just some pursuit for self-aggrandizement. It's more than that. In as much as we benefit and the quality of our lives improve as we engage faith, the ultimate goal is to coordinate this faith force towards kingdom come. It's not just about houses and cars and prosperity alone. In as much as those things pass through us and we become benefactors of it, believe me that this whole teaching ultimately is so that the global harvest, nations in one day can come to the fruit of the cross. It will not happen by the strategy we are currently working in. It's too slow. There's too much argument about the potency of the faith life that we so propose. We need a superior strategy and only faith becomes that victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes limitation in church growth. The victory that overcomes circles of witchcraft and circles of demonic oppressions over families. The victory that overcomes Kali para Kosiata. The victory that overcomes powerlessness. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? I know that there are ministers of the gospel here, respectfully speaking, we are in times and seasons where without 
a superior dimension of the manifestation of faith one day we are going to have empty pews believe me because there is such a display of of the plots of Satan over the church worldwide and Satan is doing everything within his power paying to say Jesus did not rise again and we must introduce Jesus in a dimension that will make nations desire him it cannot just be by stories and lectures alone our lives must prove the reality of the risen Christ are you in agreement with me so we are discussing faith gentlemen thank you the Lord bless you so faith is the victory the Bible says and then we also establish the fact that faith has to do with action not mere speaking I want to now teach a bit on the basis of our conviction because if you have faith in fear or you have faith in Satan it will not produce faith must be in Jesus Christ and his ability every day we have faith in something fear is having faith in the object that causes you the fear for instance are we together now we need to understand the dynamics of Bible faith Bible faith is based on two qualities of God there are two qualities of God that produce Bible faith in the believer number one very quickly is his integrity numbers chapter 23 and verse 49 Numbers 23 and verse 49 and verse 19. I meant to say Numbers 23 and verse 19. Please read with me if you can see it. Ready? Read. God is not a man. Please stop there. Please stop there. Stop there and look up. Very, very instructive statement. You may have heard me say it again and again. God only became a man. He is not a man. If God is a man, he must worship who created him. Are we together now? God is not a man. God only became a man. You have to understand this. So God is not a man that he should lie. This is a very interesting information about men. That it is usual for men to lie. For various reasons. Number two neither the son of man that she should repent that means draw back on his word hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good this ladies and gentlemen is the first quality of god that bible faith is predicated on the integrity of god comes from the word integer sameness consistency unbendedness that God is dependable God is reliable based on a quality called integrity please shout to say integrity that means that before God speaks he will have to find out whether he will change his word tomorrow and if he's sure he will not change it then he will say it you can pick this Bible and find out the things that God has said concerning you and have absolute confidence that he meant everything he said for instance I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness for instance Gentiles will come to your light they are kings to the brightness of your rising for instance I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten this is the one who has integrity speaking for instance that the the where you have been deserted so that no man will pass through you that you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations i believe why because the one who spoke is not just god who is mighty he has integrity 
He has integrity. The scripture we read earlier on, he said, and the Lord visited Sarah. Genesis 21, please give it to us again. Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. This is called integrity. Verse 2, he says, and Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time which God had spoken, integrity, I will give you 10 naira by 6 o'clock. And 6 o'clock there is an alert there. Integrity. The quality of sameness, the quality of unbendedness, the quality of consistency. Men change. They don't have to be evil. It's, 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 it's a reality that is enshrined in men. So the Bible says, hey, don't get used to men and think God is one of them. God is not a man. Someone prophesy to your spirit man. Say God is not a man. That means that every word that has come from your man of God and his wife upon this altar as touching what God has said, you will reserve a right to still keep it and say, Lord, I still believe that this word will come to pass. You told me this year will be a year of victory. You told me this year will be a year of triumph. You told me when men say there is a casting down, for me it shall be that there is a lifting up. You told me that I will not beg for bread. I will see your faithfulness. You are a God of integrity. Your boss may not be that way. Your relatives may not be that way. But I have good news for you. God is not Amen. Man of God, he told you that by the end of the year, you will have your own church land. Please find a way of shaking away on God trust a man if you think he plays you or he does not like God is not respectfully speaking he's not some politician who gives you some manifesto today and then changes no he is so obsessed with you knowing his integrity that he archived his track record in a book and says study go through dispensations i spoke to kings i spoke to nations i spoke to men in the presence of their enemies i spoke to men in the presence of their obstacles you're not a man no you're not a man oh. you're the god who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man, no, you're not a man, no. you're the God of everything, no one like you. Listen to me, let me bring a word of comfort to someone. I don't care what is before you now. If my father has told you something, it always does not look like it until it becomes it. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you. They say no one like you. No one like you, Father. No one like you, my son. You're the God of everything. I think it was the last time that I was here when um, the man of God took me around this massive facility and began to tell me the stories of the wonder working power of God you are not sitting inside a building 
you are sitting on a reality that was birthed through faith as I traveled from Lagos coming down I looked at all the buildings I looked at all the structures and I said my God once upon a time these places were not there somebody was in his room with God and God said I would do something and they said Lord I don't know what you are saying but I believe you you in the West here you have an uncommon privilege because you have a rich heritage of men and women who showed you what faith can do ordinary men some many uneducated but God spoke to them and they said if I perish I perish they stood by his word and today they have built things by the spirit that is all inspiring they have commanded results that men cannot produce let me challenge someone here God is not a man if you cannot believe God for one million that means you will never have a house in your life if you cannot believe God for a house it means you will never build anything serious for the kingdom at any level whether you need 15 naira or 1 billion, it's still faith that will bring it. Please listen to what I'm telling you. It is faith that will bring that anointing and that unction to your life. If God tells you you will stand and speak to nations, don't worry about who else is hearing. It's you he's talking to. Focus on him. I believe God. I've lost the ability to disbelieve him. I will die believing God. My life is a testimony that when you take God seriously and you believe him, he will surprise you. First to yourself and then to everyone. Everybody say integrity. When God speaks to us, we must believe. This is one of the reasons why we have to spend time meditating. Let me tell you this. Please look up. Am I wasting your time? You see, one of the reasons why we study scripture is not just for theological enlightenment alone. We study scripture because we are immersing ourselves into a belief system. Are we together now? The scripture has its way of thinking. And when you soak yourself reading through stories, through parables, something begins to happen to the way you view life. You are immersing yourself into um, stories, principles that make you think like God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, let this mind be in you. You are not going to be open to scripture for 5-10 minutes and truly believe you will have the mind of Christ. No. How many of you have seen children who watch cartoons or read all kinds of things and while they are watching it, you think they are sleepy until later on they start repeating what you just had. Even though their eyes were closing, it was entering their minds. Let the word of Christ, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, that let it dwell in you richly and then in all wisdom. The word of Christ. The advocacy to be serious with the word of God is not just to make us feel Christians. It's not just to erode away the guilt of looking unspiritual. It's more than that. The Bible is the most concise manual that helps a man to be immersed into the mind of Christ. Here and there, there are good Christian books that are extracts from the word of God. But I tell you this, soak yourself in this scripture. Read and let it do something to your mind. Listen to it and you will marvel and wonder at the way your 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 ability to view life and to analyze things now begins to look as though you were living in bible times because you have immersed yourself it is difficult to believe god if you only find scriptures that help to solve problems and stop there ask anyone who is in the academia they tell you that one of the ways that they gain mastery and master their field and their art so much is by exposing themselves to all the materials that are around that body of knowledge. They are so immersed in it, it becomes part of their life. Are we blessed? Integrity. 
Let's talk about the next quality. Two qualities of God that our faith is built upon. One, his integrity. Number two, his ability. His ability. Mighty God. His ability. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. The ability of God. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for you to do. Look up please. The Bible is saying here, Prophet Jeremiah is saying that this heaven and earth where all our problems and solutions, every solution we're looking for, we hope to bring it here within this domain that both the heaven and the earth was created by his great power. And on the strength of that, there is nothing too hard for him to do. Everybody say ability. Now listen, there are people who have integrity in our world, but they do not have ability. I promise you, that if only I get to this office and I see that things are all right, I will give you a job. The person has integrity, but he may find himself in a situation where he does not have the financial, the political, the sociological wherewithal to manifest his commitment. It takes more than integrity to perform. You must have ability. I want to pay your school fees. I really want to. But I do not have the money. God does not have integrity alone. God has ability. Now this is good news. If the only thing God had was integrity, we will we'll still be in trouble. Because he will be apologizing till today. I'm sorry I promised your grandfather that I was going to lift you. I assure you I am still God. Just give me time. When I'm done with the devil, when the mountains, when creation finally sub submits to me, I assure you that you will not cry. That's as far as integrity can go. But my God has ability. Ability is the ability or might is the ability to make what you say happen. I can desire that the light in this great auditorium be off and promise you that in five minutes it will be off. I may be well intentioned, that's integrity, but do I have the ability? It takes the, 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 the physical strength to ward off all the resistances and go to the switch and put it off. Please hear me. It is because God has both integrity and ability that we can stand and speak over people's lives. It is because God has integrity and ability that you can sow a seed and actually believe that a harvest will come. His ability shows in agriculture. There is no year provided rain and the conditions are there. When you plant, his ability is still at work in the earth. After more than thousands of years, the earth still obeys him. The God of ability. So when God says, I will lift you, don't look at his integrity alone. Look at his ability. Before God speaks, he checks whether he has the power to make it happen. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4 we'll find somewhere to pray. Second Peter chapter 1 we'll start from verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through knowledge the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3 says according as his the real giver in this kingdom is his divine power. Not just his intention. He wills it, but it takes power to give. 
his divine power hath given us all things how many things please help me how many things all things that pertain unto life and godliness let me give you an example of the things that pertain unto life school fees house all of the needs that we have those are things that pertain to life the bible says his divine power can give it the things that pertain unto godliness the richness of your fellowship your spiritual growth your sense of fulfillment your work with god whether it is a matter of life or godliness his divine power sustains the ability to cover all areas i want you to read scripture carefully and see how god mysteriously turned people around and turned lives around moses why are you crying unto me i am not just a god of integrity integrity was when i spoke to you at the bush now you see ability stretch forth your rod on that red sea it does not just end with integrity i need you to see my ability and they sang the songs of miriam i will sing unto the lord she said for he hath triumphed gloriously even the horses together with his rider only one who has power can turn a horse and the rider into a sea Let me show you his ability in scripture. How about the rod that bordered with no roots? Let me show you his ability. A man who when three Hebrew boys were cast into fire, the Bible says they saw the fourth man looking like the son of God. And it says these were men who the fire had no power over. I will sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. I sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. If you know where Egypt is, you will respect God. There is a reason why Pharaoh respected God. Egypt was a place of wizardry. Do you know there are two people in the Bible who ran away from their assignments? Or at least asked questions. It was difficult for them. One was Moses. When God said, I'm sending you to Pharaoh, he said, you are joking. Don't you, don't try me. I was to be the next Pharaoh. I knew what I was studying before I ran away. I won't go back to that place of wizardry with a rod in my hand. You want me to die? I saw these people manipulate the realms of the spirit. They were the then superpower. You would not come to eat. Pharaoh was not just a king. Pharaoh was an embodiment of spirits. So Moses holds a rod. And they look at his familiar face as he steps into Egypt. And he stands before Ramesses, his half-brother. And says, brother, good to see you. It's just that this time around I'm not an Egyptian. I've met one guy called the God of the Hebrews. And I have come with a rod as a token from his presence to you. Thus saith the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. I could imagine Moses clapping his hand and saying, wonders will never end. The wilderness has 40 years of being at the backside of the mountain has done something to this man. After his hard-heartedness ah, the mighty one shook himself and said this night there is an angel that will pass over Egypt and that all the firstborns of the Egyptians do you know the covenant that the firstborns of Egyptians had they had something called the covenant of life they didn't die anyhow you go and study history you know why God looked for the firstborns because the firstborn of an Egyptian was not an ordinary child are we together now? They were dedicated to deities and they tied their lives to either trees or animals or other objects. They didn't just die like that. One firstborn could be, a, it would be easier for all other children to die than one firstborn to die. And God said, I want to show you something. Since all your might is concentrated on your firstborns, in one night I will pass. Hela sali kaparusiata. 
oh that is the God you are still asking will rent really come that's the same God you are asking will you really lift my child that's the same God you are asking when the firstborns were dead the Bible says Pharaoh did not just release them to go he didn't even allow their dough rise he gave them gold and he said go when they left he sat down in empty Egypt and said what have I done he said pursue them what a hard man haven't seen this kind of thing you should mind your business and say, Lord, let me just be repenting while these people carry their trouble and go. Give me other slaves that will help me build Egypt. He said, no way, I'm going back. That's to tell you how stubborn Satan is. You need power, oh. Just because he left you yesterday does not mean he will leave you forever. He left Jesus for a moment, your Bible says. The next time he would come back, he didn't come to him directly. He came through Peter and then through Judas say unto God Psalm 66 verse 3 how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee hallelujah the Bible says one time the city of Jericho was shut within and without it said none came in and none came out let me speak to someone i don't know what belongs to you that has been shot and nothing what sort of a place is that listen everything god created gives and receives what kind of a place is short nothing goes out nothing comes in i stand by the god of heaven and i speak over someone in the name that is above all names everything shutting your blessings your lifting your lifting your rising i scatter that wall right now none came in none went out let me tell you this jericho was an altar because they didn't carry anything there they were not really interested in, in possessing the land they crumbled it picked a few things, picked Rahab and left. This power. Ah, Lord God. It takes power to get your property. There are still wicked men on earth. It doesn't just take power to get. It takes power to keep. But I know whom I have believed, the Bible says, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed unto him against that day. Please listen to what I'm saying because we are going to pray here. I'm praying that the spirit of faith will rest on someone. That you will get up and shake away all the things you've been giving excuses for. some of you God spoke to you since 2015 and said it's time to start your house project <laughs> you know the way this thing is you have to wisdom is profitable to direct we have to look at it let me tell you this there is no time that will be convenient for anything it's faith that creates the time and makes it convenient please hear what I'm telling you men of faith don't check the weather for anything even if the even if the storm and the boat is coming they don't stop moving they just verify whether Jesus is still in the boat if he's there the journey is still safe I, I don't I'm not teaching that we should be careless but let me tell you we live in a time with people who are full of fear is why people don't rise they don't prosper they don't build anything I will do I will do for decades and they do not move there are people who have been in this city probably I'm challenging you respectfully speaking there are many young people here you are of age you are still in your parents house you will not move out why you have been careful you know there's no job the way no one day you trust God for grace find one one room with your recharge card move out there and lie down in the mat and say father this is my Bible this is you 
the signs follow they don't go before you if you don't move you will never see anything we live in a risk averse world full of an obsession for guarantees this is the victory the spirit of God is speaking to someone there are steps you should take in this season marking time and giving flimsy excuses will not produce the results That you believe God is able please find a way of believing what is school fees I'm not a stupid person talking to you believe me I understand from a human standpoint things can be challenging things can push your faith he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up a little story years ago I was going to go and preach somewhere I prayed fasted and it was time to go and preach and rain was falling and I knew that I didn't want to disappoint those people the only way was to just make up my mind and go through that rain I said Lord you have shown me in visions that I will be speaking to kings and nations and nobles it does not look like it now but you have the power what is a car I love you more than all these things and I prayed in the spirit and I opened the door I went out through the rain while the rain was falling on me I was declaring with joy as I left in the name of Jesus one day nations will celebrate his grace even while today you are now clapping but it took faith it took faith God is inspiring someone it took faith God is saying, I'm calling you into ministry and all you are doing is printing cards and giving people and saying, you invite me and see, you will never do ministry that way. It, life will be hard if you follow it that way and you will suffer and be angry at those succeeding. Take a step of faith. Two hours, three hours every day. Lock yourself in a room. You are building capacity. It is faith. You are taking an action based on what God has said. The ability of God. I'm, I'm, listen, I want to do something to your mind now before we pray. You have to trust God. God is able. The Bible says, now unto him, Ephesians 3.20, now unto him, who is the him? God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think far above all that we ask or think if God says I will lift you this city has enough blessings for your lifting if God says I will prosper you if he says I will anoint you believe him if I stop here and we pray that's fine but listen to me if all you do is just hope one day go better is a very sociologically comforting statement but is demonic and destructive Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 this book of the law it says shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do not, not just to say to do not form all that I command you this day then and only then shall you make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. God has integrity but he also has ability. Behold I give you authority over snakes, scorpions. Do you not know that there are all kinds of demonic arsenals scheduled to see that your life never rises to the place of prophecy please don't downplay what i just said the average african family is not aware 
of the onslaughts of darkness orchestrated by hell to see that you never become what God has destined. It takes power to subdue darkness. It takes power to do what your grandfather tried doing and died in the process. What your own father tried to do and did not do. Now you come up in the name of the Lord. I'm a faithful member of Victory Life Bible Church. And in the name of Jesus, I'm rising. It takes power. Power. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth. And that by thy great power. I have, I have indoctrinated myself. I have brought myself to a point where I have been... I don't know what to call it. I've done, the Holy Ghost has done something to me. The reality of the power of God is a reality that will never fade out of my mind again. There is nothing I cannot believe God for. Believe me when I say this. The only resistance in my life is the voice of God and process. That's it. That's the only thing that has the power to limit me in life. The voice of God and process many things that you have allowed to subdue you it's time in this conference to get angry and say Lord I apologize I have limited you there are families here that have to hold their hands and say Lord we repent I don't know what suddenly happened to us that in one day God gave men cities in one day God look the Bible says that David stood before Goliath. Goliath said, am I a dog? I will kill you, but respect me. I'm a warrior. Israel, is this your best? David said, you don't know who is talking to you. You come to me with your bows. As big as you are, you are still holding bow and arrow. I come to you with a sling. And in the name of the Lord. Listen. I'm imparting faith because this night the things you have been afraid of you are going to bring them again and say who are you that mountain who are you that building project I've been giving excuses every year this is the year I must complete it this is not some carnal thing please listen to me we are spiritual people listen you know if you are giving to mediocrity this message will not bless you very much because mediocrity thrives on the absence of messages like this to keep giving excuses. A message like this will shake you to the core and leave you with a decision either to stand up and take bold steps or retreat and sit back there. There is nobody who has a guarantee for anything in this life. Men take bold, radical and sometimes risky steps of faith. Apostle, I want to start a business, but I'm afraid. Who knows what will happen? Of course, something is going to happen. What if people don't come and patronize me? And so we don't move forward. We don't make progress. Apostle, this ministry, God is putting in my heart to organize a crusade or to organize a conference, but I'm afraid. I don't want to embarrass myself. Let me tell you something. If you take the shame, you have been taking the glory too. Whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. He can't be taking the glory and leave the shame for me. Uh -uh. We are one. We are together. If you take the glory in my life. See, this is how to put pressure on God's integrity. You stand before a sick body. Let me tell you this. If you will ever raise the dead, your first assignment is to stand before one. You are never going to truly raise the dead by proxy. One day, you will have to summon the courage to look at someone with all these things in the nose and say, today. You know how many mortuaries have been locked in? Me. To pray for the dead. When you hear some of the things God is doing, it did not start today. Sir. They've taken me inside mortuary and they closed me so that the people, the administration, the administrators will not quarrel the people. And they left me there. I said, which dead body am I praying for now? Because there are so many dead bodies there. I came and stood before the dead body 
I laid my hands, it was like stone. I didn't know what parts to lay my hands on. Let me tell you one of the ways that God builds faith. He brings you face to face with what you fear. Listen to what I'm telling you. You may not like this message, but keep it. You will need it one day. It is not every prayer to drive it away that makes it go. There are times that he keeps you face to face with your fear. You will so fear to the point that you will suddenly realize that it didn't have the kind of power you thought it had. Listen, the first day I stood before someone on a wheelchair, it was not in a crusade ground, it was in a house full of responsible people. They gave me drink, they took care of me, they greeted me with the kind of honor that you will even be angry because you know that if that miracle does not happen, you must justify the honor you received. I stood there all of the scriptures that I know ah, would the ground open and let me enter I prayed for that person prayed for that person he was not even feeling anything in the leg you know there's how they can say okay I'm feeling life absolutely nothing was happening after 10-15 minutes I said that's alright no problem but you would think I left the way I came no the more you die to yourself, to your fears, the more the spirit of faith can really work in you. Back to that mortuary story. After I prayed and prayed and prayed, nothing happened. And you know they had closed the door. I prayed. I just used the opportunity to really meditate and say, look how brief this life is. These are all dead bodies that were alive. Because nothing was happening. So today when you hear stories, whether it is of raising the dead or raising people from wheelchairs, it did not happen overnight. Let me tell you the truth. No matter how much a man of faith you are, you will still go through the school of faith. It will be full of a lot of disappointments. But fail as you make progress. Move as you make progress. One day you will gain such power and dexterity. Remember the apostles and their embarrassment. Jesus went up the Mount of Transfiguration. They decided to, to use the opportunity quickly to show that they were his disciples. They came on an epileptic patient. He could not be healed. You, you know the disappointment? They met Jesus and said, no, no, come on. You couldn't have done this for us. But the time came when the shadow of Peter. There is mastery in the spirit. Listen, the one who laughs and does not do anything is the one who will remain in shame forever. The one who cries while moving is the one who soon honor and glory will rest upon his head. Please hear what I'm telling you. Know the difference between failure as an event and failure as a person. God called you to be a prophet. You call someone thinking he was a man. Let's say I'm, I'm a lady. Ah, that's number one. You are already out of it. That level of prophetic error requires you to go for a retreat. Oh, I'm seeing five people in your family. I'm the only child of my father. And you are standing there feeling stupid. Yet, genuinely, the call of a prophet is on you. Don't worry about the error. You made the mistake. Be proud of it. See, your scar that is a symbol of shame will become your symbol of honor tomorrow. When you get to heaven, you don't need to ask who among you is Jesus. Just find who has the scar. That is Jesus. The 24 elders do not have it. Just find the person who has a scar by his side. What you are ashamed of today will become the basis of your honor tomorrow. When it has to do with faith, pragmatically speaking, let me be honest with you. In the name of honesty, you may not get results overnight in one day. There is something about the development of the human spirit and its response to the word of God. 
you just keep moving as far as God spoke it you will make mistakes don't worry the school of faith is powerful it will give you everything you lost while learning you blessed I'll find somewhere to stop here so that we can pray God's ability in the morning please don't miss the morning session I will share with you the dynamics of Bible faith tonight I just showed you the two attributes of God that your faith must be predicated upon his integrity his ability his integrity. I've met people who have ability but they do not have integrity. There are others who have integrity and do not have ability. This God who has called us, this God who has anointed us, let me encourage a man of God here who is probably here and saying, Apostle, you don't know what is happening around my ministry. No growth, no increase, no destiny help us, no favor. There is a God in heaven. God is not a traditional ruler. God is not a political aspirant. He's the monarch of the universe. When God decides to invest his jealousy upon your life, woe betides any man who stands his way. He has that ability. This is the victory that overcomes. This is the victory that will build. This is the victory that will bring sinners to Jesus Christ. You make up your mind that you're bringing 1,000 souls or 2,000 souls or whatever amount of souls and it looks like how will you reach them no you just believe god for it and you watch the wonder working power of jesus can we pray tonight please rise up on your feet just two prayer points and we're done i'd like you to passionately cry cry unto the god of the heavens Cry unto the God of the Bible and say, Father, help my own belief. Help my own belief. Something about my not recognizing you are a God of integrity. Something about my not recognizing you are all powerful is limiting me in life and my life is unable to speak the praises of Jesus. But tonight I have heard your word. Lift your voice and pray. Shela kaparaka sodo malagati adaba. Skade balanta sabradi gede balanta. Please pray. Please pray. Shede mekete para sodo shalakata. You call the conference the verdict. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. my own belief Matalika Soproto Soto Balako Tessiata Hallelujah Listen please, please look at me The Bible says For our light affliction Which is but for a moment it says, He walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. It says, Whilst we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Why? For the things that are seen are temporal. Temporal means subject to change. But the things that are unseen are eternal. I'd like you to pray right now and declare any condition in your life you know that it does not look like the verdict God has brought over your life from scripture. Open your mouth in one minute and declare, I will not be discouraged. I speak to this mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. What I see is temporal. This health situation, you are temporal. Please pray, don't be silent. This financial situation, you are temporal.
this marital situation you are temporal this ministry situation you are temporal Please pray. This situation with my spiritual life, my prayer life, you are temporal. My word study life. Oh, you must change, you must change, you must change by the power of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please just lend me two, three minutes and we're done for tonight. Listen to me. If it is Bible faith, it works. Are we together? Do we have ushers here? There are people who are going to start running out by the power of God. There is a grace that is coming on people. Literally, physically, like an anointing is coming on them. Will not take time. Please help them and bring them out. Just a few minutes. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens, please bring them out, and the earth by thy great power. If he made the heavens and the earth, he can make any life. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. A strong anointing, a strong anointing is coming upon them. I know that we'll pray for the sick and the rest tomorrow, but let me just respond as the Holy Ghost is moving me. Hallelujah. There are families here. Listen to me. There are families that have been under siege for a long time. Nobody rises beyond the level. Right now, fire is coming on those people. Bring them out right now. Father, help them please. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. In the name of Jesus, whether you are an usher or not, please help them. Anyone under the anointing close to you, just bring them out. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Just give me five minutes and we're done. We have to give God an opportunity to move by his outstretched arm. Is someone praying? Open your mouth in one minute. Everything that must live your life in this conference, declare by the Spirit. Please bring them out. Declare by the Spirit. No shadow you will light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you will light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. In the name of Jesus, every family here, I speak as touching the might and the ability of the creator of the ends of the earth. That every power, hold her please, don't let her run around, she will fall. I declare by the spirit of God, every power that will not let you go, this night, by the God of heaven, I declare it broken right now. Broken right now. Broken right now. Broken right now. We're almost done. 
this is what happens in the house of God it's time for people's destinies to move forward hear me whatever has tied your feet so that you will not make progress in the name of Jesus, we set it on fire. 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 Hallelujah. Who is Balogun? Balogun. I'm hearing the name Balogun. Is there someone with that name? Balogun, you are wearing suit. Balogun, is there someone like that? You are wearing suit, no tie. Balogun, who is that? What's your name? I know that time. Please, can you lend me two more minutes, sir? Where are you from? Um, what's your name, sir? My name is Balogun Shego Philip. Your name is Balogun? Yes. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing where Bishop Oyede Ghost Church is. Where are you correct, from? Correct, correct. That's where I, I am. Correct. That's my father's house. My father's house is opposite Kenalan. What is the, what is the name? Where, where, where is the office? Opposite Kenalan. Th that's what I'm saying. Do I know you? Have I ever seen you? Yes, I'm yes. telling you that I'm looking at you and I'm seeing. Correct, correct. That's where you are. Yes. My brother, your life is about to change in a way that you will marvel and wonder. There is a God that sits in heaven. Whatever you would do, please hear me. Do your best to not miss tomorrow morning session. Even if it means you carry your loved ones, if there's no space, sit anywhere. But please make sure you come with your heart open. When God comes, please help that lady so you don't injure her. We're almost done. Are we together now? I'm seeing lights just went this direction. There's so, hold on. There's someone who will shout here now, loud under the anointing. Bring the person out, just here. Help them, please. No shadow you would light up, mountain you would climb up, coming after me. Hallelujah. So, sir, I want to pray for you. What do you do? I'm okay. I, I didn't even hear you. Let. I'm saying that. Are you a pastor? Yes. You are a pastor, yes. but you also do business. Yes. What do you do? I do business into computers. Okay. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. Your life is about to change. You will Amen. not forget this conference. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I stretch my hands and I declare. Amen. That man lifting your hand, this gentleman, you, stand up. Come and stand here. Your life is about to change. Lift your hands. Take that fire right now. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never, never be the same. There is an anointing that has come upon you. You will pray, you will fast, you will move in dimensions of the spirit. This gentleman, I don't know you all, but a great fire just came upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to respect time, but please, my apologies. Jennifer. Is there anyone called Jennifer? Jennifer. Let me just pray for you, sir. In Jesus' name here at this conference, I stand in faith with Apostle Achidume and his wife and we decree and declare over you. Let things turn around right now in a way that will surprise you. In Jesus' name. What's your name, my dear? From where? From? State of origin. Yes. Delta. Delta. Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus, the plague of witchcraft. Ah, I'm stretching my hands on you and I'm seeing the light touching that other lady, the one at your back. Isn't it a mystery? I'm stretching my hands, but what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit is touching that lady. My dear, look at me. Fire is coming upon your life for you and your family. The month of May is a strange month of lifting for your family. This is what I'm seeing by the spirit. I declare it so. Let it be. And for you, my dear, 
I break the hand of witchcraft and every orchestration. The Bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance, it says, that spoke against us, that he nailed it to his cross. We, we enforce this verdict that the cross speaks over your life and your family. And I use this as a point of contact to pray. Everything that should have entered your hand and for whatever reason has been delayed by the works of darkness. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. Some of you between now and tomorrow morning, you will return with very strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, um, you are here and I'm seeing at least there's one three years, there's one um, I'm seeing the number five. That would be five years. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I would have just closed this, but the Lord just ministered this to me. It's, who is that person? Our time is gone. We have to respect time. If you are the one I'm talking about, would you just boldly indicate so that I pray for you quickly? You're married. You're trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And this has happened to you. How many years, my dear? Five years in June. Five years in June. Is your husband here? Husband, can I pray for you? Is that all right? Please don't be embarrassed. This is a spiritual family. Let me pray for you. Come. Because that's the same way you come and stand here with your children too. You see, listen. When God does these things, it's more than just showing that a man is anointed. This is a revelation of his love. It's a revelation of his power. So beyond the man, our attention must be on Jesus to discern what he is doing. Are we together now? You're trusting God. Listen, truly speaking, God is all powerful. I know, respectfully speaking, you've consulted physicians. I know that prayers have been offered on you. And I do not demean and downplay anything that has happened to you. But I want you to believe this once. For there is a name that is above every other name. The power of God will come on one of you. When that happens, I will pray for you. This is the instruction God is telling me. One of you standing here. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come on you. In the name of Jesus, everything that is stopping your fruitfulness. I don't care the medical situation. In the name that is above all names. In the name of Jesus, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I declare womb open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you trusting God. The children God will give you will be more than just bodies. God will give you nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have believed it and we declare it. I stand in faith again with the man of God and his wife and we declare according to the time of life return with your miracle and for all of you who are out here by the anointing I declare you return back with strange testimonies and every power that will not let you go I speak by the spirit right now judgment comes upon them in the name of Jesus Christ for every one of you who has been here connecting May the spirit of faith rest upon you. Grace to believe God unusually. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, your faith in the Son of God, your faith in the Word of God will translate to supernatural results. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, give Jesus a big hand of praise. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.